G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And today, we want to talk about a slimy Australian and one that's got to be the most famous frog in the country, the green tree frog. So stick around, guys. It's pretty dangerous. So not only is the green tree frog probably one of the most famous frogs in the country, if not around the world, it was also the first frog ever scientifically described in Australia. It was actually discovered in 1790 by a man named John White. And uh, this is where their original common name come from, the White's tree frog. Now, interestingly, they had another common name for a while. White actually caught and, and preserved and sent a few of these green tree frogs over to England. And the alcohol, that the preservative that they kept these dead frogs in, basically stripped away one of the colours from the skin. You see, frogs are green, or the green tree frog is green, because of the way that green and yellow and blue pigments all relate in their skin and work together to reflect light. This chemical that they preserved the frogs in stripped one of these layers away, meaning by the time the frogs arrived, they were actually blue. So, over in Europe, they were calling these guys the blue tree frog. And even today, their scientific name, Latoria cerulea, literally means tree frog that is blue. So, it's a green tree frog that's called a white tree frog that was called a blue tree frog. Figure that out. Now, one of the other reasons why these guys have to be so well known in Australia is because of their massive distribution. So many people are coming into contact with them. They're not only found over in Western Australia in the Kimberley country, they push all the way across Northern Australia, all through the Northern Territory, through all of Queensland, down into New South Wales, even out in the top end of South Australia, out in the deserts where they follow inland waterways along. On top of that, they're also found naturally in some parts of Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, which gives them a distribution of 4 million square kilometres. That's a lot of space for these frogs to occupy. If that wasn't enough, these guys have actually been introduced to other parts of the world. At one point in time, they introduced these guys to New Zealand, and they've also found two populations of these guys living in Florida, in the United States. Now, the Florida specimens are still found there today, but the ones in New Zealand actually died out not long after they were released there, and the last one was seen there in the 1950s. But still, four million square kilometers here, plus parts of the United States, that's a hell of a distribution for a little frog. Now, throughout this distribution, these guys aren't really fussy with regards to habitat. They're found all the way from inland areas, as long as there's permanent water, through to everywhere along the east coast, particularly dry eucalyptus country, where there's big, dead, hollow eucalyptus trees that they hold water, and these guys can stay nice and moist in there during the dry times. In the last 200 years, however, these guys have shown that they're more than capable of sharing habitat with human beings. Here in Australia and all around the world, human beings and, and urban development has been the downfall of countless number of species. But not only have these guys learned to tolerate us, there's actually some interesting cases of these guys learning to use us to their own benefit. You see, male green tree frogs, like this fella here, have actually been observed going into hollow water pipes and water tanks to call for females. And the reason they prefer these sites is these plastic pipes or these large plastic poly tanks create a louder echo when they call for females, which makes them sound bigger and tougher and like a better match for the girls out there. On top of that, they can be heard from further away. So they're actually using all the things that we've built, all our infrastructure, to improve their love lives. Not only have we helped these guys find a date each night, we've also helped them get a feed. You see, green tree frogs in suburbia are well known to occupy areas around the lights that we have on at night time because the frogs have learned that when we've got our, these lights on outside, they attract bugs. And rather than having to hop around the forest looking for a feed of his own, they can sit at the windows or sit at the night porch light, and uh, as the bugs come in attracted to that light, they get a really easy feed. So, as I said, human beings have been pretty hard on a lot of animals, and urban sprawl is a major issue for species all around the world. But this guy here is one that we don't really have to worry about. He's doing just fine despite all the atrocities that we're committing around the world. As a matter of fact, it's probably this tolerance for a wide variety of habitat and climactic conditions, as well as the fact that they're not exactly fussy eaters and that they get to a nice large size, 
that results in these guys being one of the most popular pet frogs in the world. Now while we can't export from Australia, these guys somehow, decades ago, made it out of the country and all around the world. And today, a fairly large number of these guys are still exported out of Indonesia. So, while the green tree frogs native to Australia, Indonesia and New Guinea, these guys are now found all over the world in the pet trade. And you can hardly blame people. He's a really cool critter. Anyway guys, as always, thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed meeting what I think is one of the coolest amphibians out there. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or watch us on Facebook. And uh, if you wanna become more involved with our channel and help us bring more videos out and visit more animals more and more regularly, Check us out on Patreon, where I've got all sorts of perks that we can offer you guys in exchange for helping our channel grow and thrive and spread our conservation message. Other than that, guys, as always, please stay nice to wildlife, have a good one and take care.